Hi. There we go. I'm Ozdek. I am Common Sense's, Common Sense Media's Executive Editor of Ratings and Reviews, and I am delighted to be here chatting with filmmaker Chris Pern about his movie The Willoughbys, which is available on Netflix and is an official Common Sense selection for families. So welcome, Chris. So nice to have you. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's a real honor to be here. You're very welcome. Um, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the movie? Well, my name's Chris, and uh, the movie is based on an amazing book by Lois Lowry, who wrote The Giver, um, and uh, Gossamer, and a bunch of other really great kids' stories. And it's about uh, four kids who come of age, uh, instead of running away from home, they trick their parents into leaving, and then kind of discover, you know, the value of what it means to have parents as they collide with the world outside, and then they have to go on that road trip that all kids have to go through in life to try to to get their folks back and to try to get their family uh, to be a, to be a family again. So yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a coming of age family quest story. Great. Um, what drew you to this story in particular? How is it, what makes it different from other kids' movies and stories? Uh, well, I read the book uh, in 2015. So uh, a producer gave me the book and I, and I read it and I, and I really fell in love with uh, Lois Lowry's subversive tone or sense of humor. Uh, it reminded me of the stories I grew up loving, like Roll Dahl and, uh, you know, Mordecai Richler. I'm from Canada, so Jacob Tutu was a big series for me. Um, and I loved how she flipped the coming-of-age story. So instead of the kids running away from home, they tricked their parents into leaving. And that felt really funny to me. And so if it's got a really strong comedy, you know, core, that's a really good place to start building out a movie. And I love the idea of, like, taking the, um, how she took the tropes of children's literature and really, it was a bit of a love letter. Also, she was making fun of it a little bit. Uh, we, I wanted to flip that and sort of take it towards children's film. And the idea of like kind of making fun of what, you know, we recognize as sort of children's entertainment in the animated world. And, 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 and sort of do it in a way that was a little bit less sentimental. And, and I really love the kid's point of view. And I love the idea that kid logic was sort of driving the narrative of the story. So... I, I think I, I'm 45 and I still live with kid logic. So like I, I, I attach to that idea. Do you have kids? I have two kids. Yeah. Well, they're not kids anymore. They're growing up. So uh, okay. yeah, I, I'm, I miss the little ones. Uh, well, yeah, your 20 kids. and 17. So that works out well. <laughs> um, so we were pleased to honor, like I said, the Willoughby's as a common sense selection, which means that we think it's a great choice for kids and families uh, one of the things we love about it is its representation of what we call character strengths, positive qualities like courage, perseverance, teamwork. Do you, uh, do you think movies can inspire kids to learn these kinds of qualities? They did for me. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I, I, uh, I found like the stories in, in the movies and the TV shows I used to watch, like that kind of defines the backdrop of, of, uh, of, of like how you move forward in life. I think, you know, um, you know, there's the idea of, of like the metaphor, which is there to entertain you, but it also sort of shines a, a light on how to get through some of the, the trickier parts of life. And so I think, you know, when we were building the Willoughby's or any film I'm on, there's that juggle between wish fulfillment for the audience, you know, versus, you know, kind of the lesson. And the lesson is something that we all reflect on. And, you know, one of the goals is to make a story that doesn't have a, you know, it that doesn't judge the lesson. It just sort of provides the what if and then you know you see the kids figure out how to get out of it so to me that's what movies are movies and stories and books are, are, are designed for is to kind of help us live lives that we don't live that's great um what messages do you think that the film sends about um, imagination hope and the definition of family what do you hope parents parents and kids are going to take away from watching the movie um I'll probably start with the idea of family. So when when I read the book, it was called The Willoughby's, and we were going to make a movie called The Willoughby's. So this idea that this family name is like an umbrella over this story um, was something that we really, you know, kind of, you know, reacted to and we wanted to to talk about. And so while a family's name is, a, is an important component in what it means to be connected in, in the gene pool, it's not the only thing that makes a family. And I really wanted to, to talk about this idea of like, what's that emotional cement that really grounds a family? Um, so, you know, ultimately, I think the, um, you know, the journey that these characters go through is one of, you know, deciding how to choose your family. And this idea that no matter where you come from, you know, the, 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 the thing that anchors 
you know, this connection is love. And, and at the very beginning of the story, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of the what if is like, what if there was two parents who were so madly in love with each other, they didn't have any leftover for their kids, what would happen to those kids? And to me, the idea that Tim as the main character is sort of serving this family name, he needs to learn and what he needs to seek and seek out in his quest is really for love. And once he finds the answer to that love question, then he can kind of rebuild the family that he chooses. And that family is both in name and also in, in emotion. And so that to me was an interesting conversation to have. And I think when you talk about imagination and hope, I, I feel like having the imagination to see, you know, the possibility to get through the problems of life, because let's face it, it's not easy and families aren't always easy. So that imagination to me is the, is the seed of hope. And um, as the kids sort of, you know, stretch their imaginations and use their kid logic to solve the problem of the film, you know, I, I love that it, all the characters have something they want and they're all hopeful, aspirational characters. Even the bad guys are hopeful and aspirational in their own way. And that the, the idea of the imagination allows them to sort of solve this journey. And I think, you know, whether you're, you know, studying math or whether you're an artist like myself, it's that imagination that gets you kind of through problems. And so that, that to me is really what the message of the film is. In a world without the internet, in a world without answers that are right there in your fingertips, what else do you have? And it's really, you know, the, the, the ideas in, in your brain and how you connect with the people around you. And that to me is a really interesting conversation. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, like, you know, I you mentioned the influences that you read as a kid and stuff. And I, you know, certainly see some parallels to things like Roald Dahl and things like that. It would like those yeah. stories. It's, um, it's a little dark. And do you think yeah. that that's, uh, how some people object to darker content for kids. Other people say this is great. It's a safe way to experience it. What are your thoughts on the idea of getting, getting a little edgier for the kid audience? You know, I, I think it's fair enough that, you know, there are parents who want to keep their children in a space where they don't, you know, have darker stories. I, I feel like um, as an audience, when I was growing up, I was always attracted to, to the quirky, dark stuff. And I think it's because I kind of had a weird childhood and in, in that I grew up on a farm and had a lot of space. And, you know, the, the idea of like sort of getting away with just, freedom was was reality that when I grew up and started to you know go into other places like you know, went to college and what have you, you realize that not everybody had that childhood not everybody had that kind of wanderlust um opportunity that that and so I think the idea of like independence uh for children and and that kid logic manifest like because kid logic is dark at times and, and, and talking about that and exploring it and playing with it and trying to be funny with it. To me, that's like, that's, that's like really good material um, to talk about, but you know, and, and I, and ultimately, I mean, in making this film, we always wanted to make sure that the film never felt heavy or affected. So that was a big reason that our design language is really bright. All yeah. the textures are hyper real and stuff. So we always wanted the audience to know that this isn't real. This is not a documentary. This is a parable or a fairy tale and kind of like, you know, how old fairy tales always dealt with like the good and the evil in life. Sure. I, I wanted to just sort of like keep that element in play and that, that really came from the book. so it was one of those things like where you know we said yes to the book we said yes to that tone and I and I I uh as a storyteller I love I love playing that line but if I could keep it funny always keep it on the funny side of things I think that helps get the audience through it and ultimately allows the emotions at the end to really you know sort of land as a real thing as opposed to just being a, a written thing and I think the voice cast helped a lot with the funny side of things they're oh, all, they're brilliant. Yeah, yeah. they're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say to a kid who's interested in growing up to be an animator or a filmmaker? Um, I, I first of all, I'd say I'm jealous because <laughs> they have a lot more stuff than I had as a kid. It's amazing what you can do with a phone or an iPad and sort of like between the apps and just like the simplicity of where there's cameras now. Um, I think if you're if you're interested in being a filmmaker, uh, I always sort of. I, I believe we learn by doing. And I think the trick is sort of letting go of judgment and just sort of exploring the stories that are in your imagination. And I'm really lucky in what I do. Like every time a movie comes out, I get to travel around. I, you know, when it's not a uh, you know, lockdown pandemic, get to go to schools and meet children. And I, I love what they create. And I think there's something about storytelling, which is a human desire to communicate and connect. And, 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 and now these tools are all available 
to to anybody. So that's a pretty amazing thing to have right now. And I think, you know, honestly, I think reading is really important, uh, almost more important than watching movies. And and um, I, I know I'm plugging a movie, but I think that idea of like living in story and and seeing how you know. Uh, stories form uh, and, and reading is a, is a slow motion exercise and it allows you to think. And I think being able to sort of like, you know, digest stories and, and, and put your ideas back into the medium is, is really important. And as far as animators go, I mean, if you want to be an animator, the base skills are the most important ones because what an animator really is, is an actor. It's an actor who's bringing life to an animate thing. So, um, you know, I think drama is super important. I think I, I believe in the base skills like drawing um, because a lot of what, you know, whether it's, you know, clay or, or a line drawing or a pixel, it's all about posing. It's all about communicating emotion and, and performance through an inanimate thing. So drawing is a great way to, to get there. So, you know, and it's, anybody can do it. I mean, I feel like if you can have a, pencil on a piece of paper you can create your ideas and you can start to like become you can learn those skills that will lead you towards being a storyteller or an animator does that make sense <laughs> uh my kids really enjoyed watching you draw the characters on uh on tuesday in the, the other event and speaking of which my daughter who's 10 wants to know what was your favorite part about working on the film oh I have a cheeky answer for this. So it's a bit like when someone, like when you say, I wish for more wishes. So my, 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 my favorite part is actually the crew. And the reason that I love the crew is I feel like, for me, I've been an artist my whole life since I was like three years old, as long as I can remember. And I, the, the, the search for like craft is really important to me. Like how things get made, I find really fascinating. And making these movies, I get to work with like two or 300 people that are really good at their jobs. And I love like the journeys you know, four or five years on a movie. And that sounds like a long time, but every day something new is happening and every day somebody's contributing something. And it's, it's that idea of like not being afraid to, to put an idea into the world and then watching how other people take that idea and grow. And, and that, that sort of, you know, that sort of, um, you know, that, that living thing, that seed that, that turns into a, a plant, like that it's magic. And it's, it, but it's, it's not magic in that it's sort of coming from nowhere. It's coming from people, people who have worked really hard and, and, and that collaboration is so fun. And so like, I think whether it's working with designers or animators or painters or, you know, even sitting in editorial where we put the whole movie together, it's, it's that process of like seeing other people do their jobs well is so enlightening for what I do, you know, in, in terms of me being an artist and wanting to always get better. It's like you learn by seeing other people do things amazingly well. So that's a real privilege. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. When my son, who's six, said he wanted me to tell you that his favorite part is when the Barnabys say, hi, mommy. <laughs> hi, mommy. Well, they want love, too. Everybody yes. wants love. They're just so desperate to sort of be connecting. So he loved their they love. don't know that they're creepy. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so, you know, right now we're dealing with a threat that's, you know, even bigger than mother and father, the coronavirus. And so I yeah. bet a lot of people are watching the Willoughby's to stay entertained while they're at home. What are you doing or watching for fun? How are you staying connected with other people? Well, um, my, my daughters who are growing up, they're back on a farm in Ontario and I'm in LA. So we, uh, we do, um, internet board games. So playing a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a game called dominion, a lot of chess, a lot of, um, uh, just, um, yeah, connecting monopoly. I try to play a game like two or three times a week. Uh, I've been watching a lot of movies, catching up on old movies. Uh, you know, just watched Tootsie the other day. Such a good film. So, and then, uh, you know, trying to go for runs and trying to, uh, trying to stay busy. And the other side of it is animation. I've been kind of social distancing my whole life, you know, so there's a lot we can still do. So work is still going on. So we're still, you know, writing and developing movies and trying to figure out what's next. But, um, you know, it's good to be busy. No, oh, that's great. Yeah, I feel like there could be a real uh, boom in animation, animated projects after this because you do so much. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings uh, with, with actually a lot of the crew from, from the Willoughby's because, you know, when the movie ended, this, this whole lockdown happened. It was sort of a weird thing. Like, we literally got the movie done. And then, like, four days later, like, the world kind of went. Poof. So we didn't have that red carpet. We didn't have that closure. So, uh, you know, every day I'm trying to sort of connect with different people from, from that journey. And so it's, uh, that's a really nice thing to do. It's not the same as hugging people and sort of having that moment in a dark room where you celebrate the thing you made. But... Uh, in some ways is more intimate, which is maybe better.
<laughs> and then just one last one question is what what was your what were your favorite pieces of media or piece of media when you were a kid book tv show movie anything i um i because i grew up on a farm um we didn't have like comic stores like it so the, the paper would come to the house and the saturday morning funnies that was that was my that was my gateway into it and i used to clip them out and tape them down and make my own books with them and stuff uh, so we're like calvin hobbs that that was probably you know bill Watterson is probably one of the biggest influences on on my my style uh just because i love how he's subversive too and there's that darkness in what he does but it's always funny yeah. and it's always like a little bit cute and the kids are smart like i love that calvin's so smart so i think that that kind of storytelling was was really big far side was big i i love the one panel comic like to me that's that's the perfect mm -hmm. art form like if you can make someone laugh with one drawing and not a lot of text like i think that's that's a really hard thing to do so like as i've gotten older that stuff just doesn't go away and i still if i feel really kind of down and sad i'll grab one of those old comics off the off the shelf and give them a read um, you still read yeah. the things in the paper i read them every day so it's nice to hear them. yeah yeah i do yeah <laughs> i do i do and I, there, there used to be more of them remember yeah. and on the weekend you'd get a whole like a whole book full of them but mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah that was a big influence for me and of course disney movies and stuff like and, and looney tunes that we, we used to get that coming through like just on on tv yeah. and stuff so yeah. that was that was the animation side but really it was the comics yeah we've been watching a fair bit of looney tunes lately with the kids and that's been a fun one they uh, hold up <laughs> yeah they sure do well, some of the jokes are a little dated with some stereotypes we yeah kind of uh you know walk or dance around a little bit <laughs> yeah they, um, they ha i think they've curated a lot of that out too yes. haven't they, they like, yeah, my husband has <laughs> the full collection so every so often we're like oh, oh wow keep that one <laughs> 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 or at least have a conversation. Um, that's where sites like Common Sense come in handy. Uh, well, that is, those are all the questions I had for you. So thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And thanks for giving everybody a fun thank you. To, uh, to help distract them right now. Well, thanks. And uh, I, I uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And um, I hope everybody likes the film. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.